Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this latest episode of Daniverse. If you want to hear my own thoughts on movies like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, then head over to my website, dansden.net, where I do written reviews on a regular basis. Now then, let's buckle up and get the show on the road. Everybody's favorite blue and red strongman is about to get another film reboot. 33rd time's the charm, am I right? I'm always very cautious whenever a new Superman movie gets announced, because I want to think this version will actually work, and instead I'm generally usually left very sorely disappointed. However, I do have some faith, especially under James Gunn's watchful eyes. This will be the best and most modern representation of the hero since the original Christopher Reeve film. With a new take on the character, there are many things I want to see improved. These include a sunnier version of Superman, better usage of his powers, and I especially like to see him go up against different, and even more threatening, supervillains. Outside of the infrequent quality, if there's anything one can really complain about later day Superman movies, it's the disappointing villainous list of cohorts that he's faced off against over the years. Like seriously, whereas Batman has had a bunch of his villains represented in live action, good or bad, Superman's rogue gallery on screen has been severely lacking to say the least. We've had Lex Luthor, Zod, wannabe Lex Luthor because Gene Hackman walked off set, Nuclear Man, Lex Luthor again, Zod again, Zuckerberg Luthor, and Zod's Day 2, technically. This has always given people the impression that Superman's rogue gallery is actually much worse than it actually is. And from my personal experience, that's simply not true. That's what I'm here to rectify. With this video, I'm going to count down 10 Superman villains that I'd love to see Gunn use in his next movie. While Lex Luthor has already been confirmed as appearing, I'm expecting and hopeful that he plays more of a supporting background role. Instead, any of these fiends will be more than enough to represent an actual challenge for the Man of Steel. But first, before we get started, please remember to like and hit that subscribe button. Up, up, and away, the buckling of that click. Anyway, onward. Number 10, Parasite. Created by writer Jim Shooter and Al Pastino in the pages of Action Comics 340, Parasite is janitor Maxwell Jensen in the pre-crisis, and more famously, Rudy Jones in the post-crisis. Jones was exposed to radiation while working at Star Labs, turning him into a purple monster, with the ability to absorb the life energy out of people. Parasite represents a different challenge for Superman, because while he's a powerful opponent, Superman can't directly harm him. Instead of just using kryptonite, Parasite can weaken soups with solar energy. This means that he has to directly defeat this challenging opponent in other ways than just merely to give him a blow to the head. Given what he ultimately turns into and the contrast between him and Superman's appearance, an alien who looks like a human and a human who has been turned into looking like an alien, it could make for a genuinely great horror show of a character. A mutated person who doesn't want the world to see him as a monster, despite his appearance, but ultimately gets provoked too far and goes absolutely berserk. The only reason this villain isn't higher on my list is because I think of Parasite, especially in a theatrical form, as more of a jobber type antagonist. Somebody for Superman to face off only as an obstacle so the real baddie, Lex or otherwise, can unleash their ultimate evil plan. Basically he's a punching wall to establish Superman's powers. It's possible to make it work. That's exactly what they did with the animated feature Superman Man of Tomorrow. But, for a two-plus-hour theatrical feature, it might get a little repetitive after a while. Even though Parasite is only number 10, and despite what I said earlier, I'd still love to see him in a Superman movie. He's the perfect starter antagonist. Number 9, Titano. Created by writer Otto Binder and artist Wayne Boring in the pages of Superman 127, Titano was originally a chimp named Toto, who during a trip into space was hit by two meteors, one containing uranium and the other kryptonite. Returning to Earth, Toto started growing in size, gaining the ability to shoot laser-eyed kryptonite, which made him a lethal threat against the Man of Steel. Now here's a foe who on paper fits the best and worst of the Silver Age aesthetic. However, I think if reworked from his original conceit, even removing the kryptonite powers, Titano can actually be quite a compelling and challenging piece of work for soups. Unlike a lot of other villains on this list, Titano is not evil by his own means. Instead, he's a symptom of the errors of human ways. And if Gunn wants to add some strong pathos, 
You could do worse than having a giant gorilla in your super strongman movie. Superman wouldn't want to go too hard on the creature, as he would be afraid of killing or even hurting him too much. Meanwhile, Titano goes on a stomping yard towards the city of Metropolis, which would create even further conflict. Think of it as a cross between The Rock's Rampage and the recent Planet of the Apes films, only with a chimp that grows in size rather than brain power. Plus, with how Titano's origins are handled, you can make a commentary on the errors of animal experimentation. Superman Annual Number 1 from 1987 is already a perfect launching pad to take inspiration from for a more tragic take on the character. Gunn already showed the horrors of animal cruelty experimentation in Guardians 3 very well, so it might seem a bit redundant. However, in some ways, Titano could be an even more dangerous take on how that can all go so horribly wrong. In one word, just do it. Number 8. Mattello. Created in the pages of Action Comics 252, but officially getting a second upgrade in Superman 310 by writer Martin Pascal and penciler Kurt Swan, Mattello is John Corbin, a small-time con man who nearly loses his life in an accident. However, in a last ditch effort, he has his heart transplanted the body of an artificial robot that happens to be powered by chunks of kryptonite. Just like Parasite, this could be an antagonist who would fall into the category of serving the main villain of the actual story, i.e. Luther. But Mattel's kryptonite-laced origins give him more than a heads up on the Blue Wonder. He makes for a lethal opponent that could kill Superman in a matter of minutes if he's not careful. You could also play up the operatic origins of Mattello, how he's a man who became a machine almost entirely because of an incident that was out of his control and then was tricked into fighting Superman, but it revealed the dark-hearted nature as a crook that was always inside of him. Mattello is such an obvious foil for the Man of Steel that he was supposed to be in the original draft of Batman v Superman, with the wheelchair killer from the infamous Jar scene taking the part. Would have made more sense to use Mattello than Doomsday, just saying. Whatever route they decided to go with Mattello, I welcome this villain into a future Superman feature with open arms. Number 7. Lord Satanus Created by writer Marv Wolfman and artist Kurt Swan in the pages of Action Comics 527, Lord Satanus is a sorcerer from the far future where everything has reverted to a mythical medieval world. Satanus is in a constant struggle with the only person who has ever bested him, his wife Cyrene. Unlike other villains in this list, this is an absolute Dan pick because this is a character who is very obscure and hasn't been used much post-crisis. He was only recently brought back briefly a few years ago for a Suicide Squad comic. However, as underutilized a pick as he may be, Lord Zatannis in a Superman movie does serve an interesting function. He plays on Superman's vulnerabilities and inexperience of magic, something that's obviously been yet to be properly explored on screen. Even though he looks terrifyingly powerful on the surface, Zatannis is one of the few villains that Superman cannot beat by conventional means. He has the ability to strip Superman of half of his powers, forcing him to defeat the villain with a combination of luck and strategy instead. In a film version, I feel like this type of antagonist would provide a much different menace for the Man of Steel to face. Not to mention given he's a magic user and his backstory, I think it leads to some creatively designed monsters, many of them bordering on looking like eldritch type horror beasts. Plus, if there's anyone I trust to pull such a neglected or completely underused character out of nowhere like that, and use it well, it's James Gunn. Anywho, number 6, Livewire. Livewire is not a character from the comics. Instead, she was created for Superman in the animated series in 1997. Unfortunately, Livewire's appearance in the show did not translate into a robust use in the comics. A popular and controversial shock jock, recently reworked as a vlogger, Leslie Willis was enhanced with electricity powers after foolishly refusing to end a concert during a rainstorm, turning her into a powerful blue menace. Livewire could be interesting for Superman to face, especially when depicted with an actual movie budget. Her powers are more dangerous than regular electricity because she can aim her blast directly, enough to actually stun or injure the Blue Wonder, which allows her to be a direct threat to Superman in a way that isn't cosmically powered in nature. Additionally, Livewire is a good way to compare and contrast Superman. Clark Kent, the humble reporter 
who is interested in actual fame and fortune versus Leslie Willis, the egotistical wannabe entertainer who likes to get people's attention by stirring up trouble. With this concept, you could play up the idea of Livewire taking advantage of social media by flat out embarrassing Superman, spewing the modern conception of misinformation, and turning a lot of public against the hero in the process. The major downside of Livewire is that she might not be perfect as the sole antagonist of a film, and too many see her better as a Supergirl villain. However, given later isn't likely to have her own movie anytime soon, I'd much rather Leslie face Superman. She'd be a conventional first time foe for him, but would give him a real shock to the system. Number 5. Toy Man A Golden Age Superman villain, originally created in the pages of Action Comics 64 by writer Don Cameron and artist Ed Dauberton, the Toy Man has taken on various forms and aliases, but he's usually referred to by the name of Winslow Shot. Shot, a toy inventor, unexpectedly lost his toy shop and his wife, turned to a life of crime to get his revenge. It might seem bizarre for Superman to be facing off against a Batman type of villain. However, the Toy Man represents something that most other antagonists on this list don't. Being an actual regular human with no powers, just inventions, he forces Superman to use his ingenuity and not his fists in any literal way. There are a bunch of ways you go about depicting Toy Man on screen, but for me, it's a tie between the more sympathetic villain who lost it all versus the 90s animated Superman version, where he's shown in a far more creepy and sinister light. In either take on this character, Shot would still be a toy maker, either losing his wife or his son to a rare disease. Seeking revenge on Lex and Luther Corp, he wouldn't reappear immediately, instead sending out his robotic army of playthings to take down Luther. Clark would be sent out to investigate, and from there he would confront the troubled inventor face to face. As well as being an excuse for Kent to do some classic newspaper reporting, this version of the character could also play up some not so sly commentary on the ludicrous cost of health care in America. Toy Man doesn't sound like the greatest villain on paper for the Man of Steel, but if anything, he might be the most interesting, being one of the antagonists with the fullest amount of potential in live action. There's a bunch of different ways you can handle the character. He's like a toy box waiting to be opened. Whichever way you go, it's possible to make him some level threatening and an actual challenge for Superman. Plus, who doesn't want to see Superman go up against a bunch of giant toy mechs? That's like a dream come true for me. Number 4. Bizarro. Created by writer Otto Binder and artist George Papp and first appearing in the pages of Superboy 58, Bizarro is an imperfect clone of Superman, first invented by Professor Dalton in the pre-crisis to face Superboy, then by Lex Luthor in the post-crisis. Everything Bizarro does is the opposite of what it's supposed to be, and while he's often well-intentioned, his backwards viewpoint of thinking often leads him to doing the wrong thing. Bizarro would be the perfect Frankenstein monster-style antagonist for Superman to face, a villain who is not really evil, but has no good sense of what is right and wrong. There are a few different ways you can depict the character in live action. You could make him into the traditional bad Superman copy, but my take would lean more towards the tragic and sympathetic side. I'd have him be a clone created by Lex Luthor, who simply went haywire. He wants to be a hero, but doesn't know which side is correct because he's completely broken. The most recent depiction of the character in live action in the Lois and Clark series was very similar to that. And it works as a good launching pad for a different kind of adversary for Superman. While Superman has faced off against darker versions of himself in past films, most notably the drunk corrupt Superman and Superman 3 and Nuclear Man Superman 4, none of them have been as freakishly off as Bizarro could be. The great thing about Bizarro though, is at first he could be depicted as a villain, but the character can make a noble sacrifice at the end, eventually come back, and actually become a semi-part of Superman's family, only as more of an anti-hero. Whatever route they decide to go with Bizarro, this is one odd little clone that I'd love to see depicted with an actual budget. Bizarro am good. Number 3. Brainiac Created by writer Otto Binder and artist Al Pastino, and first appearing in Action Comics 252, Brainiac was originally introduced as an alien who collected cities in bottles, but was eventually retconned into being a robotic machine from the planet Kula known as Rildox. 
In spite of being one of Superman's greatest adversaries, Brainiac is possibly the most cursed villain in his entire roster in terms of media appearances. Between the on-screen lack of respect towards Superman villains and the number of Superman projects that have ended up on the cutting room floor, Brainiac has been the planned antagonist of so many of these dead films. These notably include the original planned version of Superman 3, Donner and Lester, the sequel to Superman Returns, and perhaps most infamously, The Doomed Superman Lives. That is why it is imperative that Gunn finally depicts Brainiac in live action. I and thousands of other fans have been waiting forever for the computer villain to finally be shown with a real budget, and on a huge grand scale. As for what angle I would take, I'd have it be a mix of his modern origins on Superman the Animated Series, being the AI computer from Krypton, so he personally can be tied to Superman and his legacy, while still keeping his classic comic book roots intact. A mindless cyber computer with enhanced strength that comes to Earth tricking people with the idea that he wants to learn their knowledge. Then it's revealed that he really wants to steal it and then destroy the planet. Sounds like the perfect movie length adversary for the Man of Steel. The only hard part is actually getting the character off the ground for real. Also, if you finally do use the character, could you please still use his pet monkey Coco? Any world conquering machine villain isn't complete if he doesn't have a space simian on his shoulder. Number 2, Mr. Mixel Picklick. First appearing in Superman 30 and created by Jerry Siegel and artist Ari Yerboro, Mr. Mixel Plex is an imp from the fifth dimension who has powers beyond powers. He decides one faithful day to cross over into our universe and begins to torment Superman for his own pleasure and boredom. Mixie is my absolute favorite Superman villain because unlike other Superman villains, which are usually powerful demigod type freaks, or opponents who play up weakening Superman's power in some ways, Mixie forces Superman to be clever. Anytime he appears, it becomes a game of showcasing Superman eventually learning to outsmart the imp. While Mixie is one of those characters who people think is too ridiculous for film, at this point I'm very positive that with the right kind of imaginative writing, he can work in live action. Mixie can absolutely give Superman a day he'll never forget, and it'll be a hoot and a half. One way they could try and upgrade the character for blockbuster length is to base it off Alan Moore's interpretation of Mixie and whatever happened to the Man of Tomorrow, where he's portrayed as the perpetrator of all Superman's problems. I myself prefer they go the more traditional route, if only because it hasn't been done before in a big screen format. Imagine Superman waking up one morning and suddenly everything is not as it seems. He can't get his shirt on right, Daily Planet's logo is upside down, and suddenly everyone is turning into different things left and right. Then Mixie appears, and that's where the fun really begins. This might all seem silly on paper, and there's an argument that audiences might not take the general conceit, not to mention if it could fill up an entire film's runtime, but it allows for a different kind of crazier, funnier Superman story that I think would be a great change of pace. Plus, if there's anybody I trust to bring out the wackier and goofier side of the comic book universe successfully, it's James Gunn. Number 1. Manchester Black First appearing in Action Comics 775 by writer Joe Kelly and artist Doug Mankey, Manchester Black and the organization known as The Elite are essentially a take on the Wildstorm comic, The Authority. They become most famous for their strategy of taking down and then killing criminals thus making sure they're properly disposed of, so they never come back. This puts them at odds at Superman, whose own moral code goes against these very violent tactics. While Manchester Black seems in theory like somebody who Gunn would want to get as far away from, especially as a warm-up first movie adversary, I do think his initial contrasting means of handling crime would make for a fascinating quandary that could suit Superman personally. In a way, one can make it a poignant commentary on the effectiveness and or intended need for darker superhero stories and movies, versus the more silly and or optimistic viewpoint of that very same conversation. Testing Superman's old time values, and putting the character in the modern spotlight of how he's perceived, without resorting to making the hero as dour and depressing as possible. Here is a person who does everything Superman doesn't do and in a very hyper sort of way. Him and his group's vigilante approach 
plays in contrast to Soup's strong moral compass, which makes them more than enough of a personal squabble for the Man of Steel. If you really wanted to put the legacy in Superman Legacy, then I don't see how you could do worse than a character who is the complete inverse of what he stands for. If anything, it could force him to take a solid look at what kind of heritage he'd like to leave behind for people to follow. This is why Manchester Black was number one on my list. Black is a perfect inverse for Superman because while he's human, he represents the kind of person he'd rather not be. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I don't expect most of these villains to appear in Superman Legacy, but these are really the characters I love to see the most. Some of them, like Brainiac and Mixie, maybe don't make sense as first-time antagonists. But I've been waiting so long for those characters to appear properly on the big screen that I'd say, go for it. I'd like to see Gunn try something different. I'm fine with Luther being in the background. Just don't make him the ultimate big bad. And as always, I'm faster than a speeding bullet. I'm buckling down and I'm going to end this video right here. Bye.